inspect this air filter. Our spark plugs look new, which is good. You'll notice that our air temp sensor is backwards, which was something that started after the car division jerk offs took over. Oh, the bailing wire should be on the back side. They insert the switch backwards. Dinks. All right, it looks a little grungy, but what do we have in the pleats? Yeah, I'm gonna change the air filter. They're inexpensive. This is totally not needed. This used to live up here on the battery. There's no need for that. Or this little foam pad. It used to lie underneath the strap. The foam pad should actually be on the bottom, but that's something you can deal with later on when the fuel tank is off to replace the filter. So I'm going to vacuum this air box out, install a new air filter. Uh, we'll take a look at our clutch fluid now since I'm composing an email to you anyway. I would like to point out this paddle is broken. These are replaceable, but I do not have the 1150 type like this in stock. I only have the old 1100 style. I can certainly add that to an order and we can change it in the future. So I'm going to put this down and take a peek at that clutch fluid, which is way the fuck too high. None of these screws have copper anti seize on them. They at least came out okay, which is good. Put those down before I drop them. fucking high that is. Your clutch fluid level, as I said in an earlier video, rises as your clutch disc wears. Um, when the fluid, the fluid level is supposed to be at the middle of the window, no higher. Uh, that allows space between 6,000 mile services for it to rise. In this case, we are over the top of the window. And that is not good. Um, the fluid is pretty clear, so I'm not concerned about flushing the fluid right now or putting a speed bleeder on. So I'm just going to siphon some of this off and bring it back to where it should be. Two thousand two R eleven fifty RT. We start off with fairing screws are missing under both mirrors. The center stand deployment tab has been lopped off and plugged, and the center stand seems to be just a tad shorter than normal because this bike sits with both tires firmly planted on the ground I've had to add a one inch block in order to get the rear wheel high enough to be able to turn it so I can adjust the valves. We also have cracked and repaired a cracked and repaired dash on both sides we have a mixture of screws. These are aftermarket stainless steel Allen head, pan head Allen screws. In a couple of spots, we have a stainless Torx head, a zinc Torx head, and down here we have what should be on this bike are the black painted Allen pan heads. We got quite the mixture of screws. We got all four different types, all three, two BMW types, and then a couple others added. 
and I just removed a 20 millimeter screw from the fairing near the exhaust. These 20 millimeter screws only go in one place. These three holes on the foot peg plate on each side of the bike. This has received a new starter recently. This seems to be the year for failed starters. Guess these things are finally getting up in age. Notice this valve cover has some crash damage to it. And you'll notice this tank is very much discolored. That's usually a good indication that the frickin' charcoal canister has plugged up at some point. Suck the sides of the tank in. Cylinder one, left side. Our exhaust valve clearance is fine. Exhausts are loose. These should stand out on their own. Uh, some other notes. The oil stinks like BMW Synthetic, which is made by Haveline, Mexico. It's automotive grade, it's not anything special. I do not recommend it in these. The oil heads that have been here with leaks have had synthetic engine oil in them. You can run synthetic in the transmission and rear drive. I do not recommend it in the engine or you will be facing oil leaks sooner than later. Uh, it's also more expensive and it doesn't have the anywhere additives that the regular Spectral 4 has. While this has received the upgraded male end of these quick disconnects, these are metal, the female side is still plastic. Those are still brittle. If it were my bike, I would change them, but it's up to the customer at this point. I see we do not have a speed bleeder on the clutch circuit which means the only time this clutch circuit has been bled if ever or flushed has been by a dealer. If we look here the reservoir is over full. As these clutches wear the clutch fluid level rises. If it rises and there's no place for it to go, it ends up causing the clutch to slip. You won't even notice until the friction material is worn into the rivets, and then it will really slip. So we'll be uh, investigating that clutch circuit momentarily. Get that fluid changed. We have our top right alternator belt cover bolt is cross threaded at a pretty severe angle. So I'm half. <laughs> Alright, gets funnier. Somebody cut the fucking middle out. Who the fuck did that? Fucking morons. It's a good way to kill your haul unit earlier than usual. Alright, this one's a tough one. It's cross-threaded. It's probably going to break. I'm going to uh, hit it with free spray. But I really, I can't heat it. I can't heat the area around it because of the plastic cover. So, let's try this. Burning. It's frozen too. A little touch of winter. Woohoo! Sweet. It actually came off. Nice. I love this stuff. Nice haul. As I always do for customers who still have the charcoal canister on, here is a clean container 
Here is the fuel filter we removed. Manufactured 31st of May 2011. It's already black and shitty. And we see it's dark. A lot of charcoal. Sooty shit in it. We'll be removing the charcoal canister. Some dimwit took me to task claiming that the dirt, the black fuel that's in the fuel filters is normal dirt from fuel and not charcoal. Here's a charcoal canister that has charcoal in the line. That has made it from here all the way across here over to the freaking purge valve, which also has charcoal in it. <laughs> and here we go. That's the worst example I've seen. That looks like frickin' mouse shit. It's not. We have one very new, recently installed alternator belt on here. It's too bad the fuckers couldn't be bothered to put the screws in right. But at least we were able to salvage that one. So we're going to run a tap through this and replace that bolt if it's buggered up, which it probably is. And uh, that part, this part of the job will be done. Here we have the front cover with a nice big hole in it. Why? Well, my guess would be some freaking moron that recently put the alternator belt in, took the bottom pulley off. Why? I have no idea. Maybe they replaced the haul unit. I don't know. But anyway, I bet they left the nut loose and it walked out and burnt a freaking hole in the front of the cover. This goes along with the cross-threaded upper right-hand cover screw. Mm -hmm. Makes me wonder who the fuck worked on this last. Is that a Mac sticker? Getting ready for a test ride. It is 9.20 p.m. You hear that ticking. That's usually a worn throttle body shaft. There's no free play on the right throttle cable. Oh yeah. There's no free play on the left throttle cable either. We'll see how these shake out after I get it up to temp and I synchronize them, but they're probably going to need that throttle body shaft. It surges a bit at 3500, which I'd expect if the throttle cable is so far out of adjustment. The throttle's incredibly stiff to turn, so I'm not surprised with the mileage. They're probably original cables, um, so now we synchronize it. All right, this is before synchronization. 
We are at five bars. One, two, three, four, five. Zeroed on the twin. Holy shit, we're way over here. Okay, I'll hold that. Yep. That's freaking incredible. This is gonna be a long oh this one's loose anyway. It's lock nuts loose. off for a second. This adjuster is all fucked up. Wow. Alright, restart. Control on the right throttle body with the air screw. It's our balance. Wow. Mm -hmm. in between three and one. Same thing. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I'd laugh if I weren't so pissed off about the frickin' poor service this bike has had prior. This is your oxygen sensor wiring. None of this gets bundled up down here, and it certainly shouldn't be rubbing on the fucking throttle body. So, this being a part and all of these sharp edged fucking zip ties that I found tells me that this has stripped an input shaft before. This transmission's been out. You can also see on this throttle body, somebody's tried rebuilding this before. It's all freaking scarred up. It's a fucking wreck. So, I have to say, it's already had a shaft and a clutch. It's a prime candidate for the modified clutch, but these throttle bodies need to be rebuilt or replaced. I can't tune this right. I'm hoping it's gonna be it's certainly gonna be better than it was, but I can't dial this in the way that it should be due to the wear in the throttle body shaft. I can't do much with the idle due to the throttle bodies. However, at least under load,
we reinstall the panels. I want to read out the codes. Take a single spark. Oh, on. Let's start with engine faults. We'll get the hall sensor fault because it's not running. Air temp sensor circuit. Open circuit or short circuit to positive. Not present now. Fault occurred zero times. Well, what the fuck's it there for then? <laughs> Assholes. Alright, clear. Yes. All sensor remains. That's because it's not running. Let's go back. Let's see, we've got the analog brake system. Read codes. No fault codes found. Good. We're all set with this. Come on. All right, you can disconnect that. Turn the ignition off. All right, so the issues we have are we need the front engine cover, the alternator cover, black plastic, 45 bucks new. We can see if we can get one from Beamer Boneyard for far less. Uh, other issues, the throttle bodies both need to be rebuilt. That rebuild kit from Bing is, I think, $250, and you're looking at a couple of hours labor. Um, I don't know what kind of damage we're going to find inside. So, again, if I can find a good pair for $250 from Beamer Boneyard, that would be the better route. Um, the throttle body numbers, there'll be photos of them and in this gallery. Other issues. I didn't get any clutch slippage, but I didn't ride it that far. Um, so, you know, you can put off the modified clutch as long as you want, I guess. Slave cylinder is okay. The clutch circuit fluid was not black or dark brown, no metallic in it, no issues there. Uh, what other funky things did we have going on here? I have to look on the work order. Other issues we have. Fairing screws. I mean, that's just a matter of having a mixed match of fairing screws. It looks weird. The biggest pain in the ass is it takes a little bit longer for a tech to get the panels off, so it costs a little bit more for a service. Uh, tire pressures were horribly low. Your front was 25, the rear was 30. They need to be front 42, rear 44. Go up two pounds if you're going to be loaded with luggage and have a passenger. Uh, charcoal canister was plugged. The vacuum lines for the charcoal canister were plugged, so that fucking charcoal canister is no more. And that's all I got off the top of my head. The bike's in nice shape, but it's had some really... Oh, we're also missing the uh, other half of this fuel tank mount. goes inside that leg. So anyway, the bike is in good shape. Um, it's just sad that it's had such horrible freaking maintenance previously. But, you know, with uh, the little bit of an investment, that can all be brought back. RT with replacement used throttle bodies from Beamer Boneyard. This bike has 83,331 miles. This is post synchronization. That's really good. However, our choke is nothing, so I need to adjust that. Adjusted, you can see an increase in 
RPM with this on. It needs to be even more than that. You see this is all rusty. So this has probably been ineffective its full life. That's better. It's probably still got issues inside the junction box, but at least this works for a cold start. So now we add some alcohol to this. Slide that over to there, and that's all set. 